Welcome Bridgewater College Teacher Education Program students. Today we're going to play a game called the Factor Game. We're playing this game on a smart board, although you could certainly play it on just a regular chalkboard if you wanted. It's an easy game to set up, but the smart board has some features that make it pretty easy to use. The game is played like this. You divide your class into two teams, maybe a left side and a right side, or whatever you want, into two teams. One team is picked to go first. The first player on that team will select a number from a board that we're going to see in a few minutes. And his team gets that many points. The opposing team gets all of the factors of that number that haven't already been taken. And you'll see what I mean by haven't already been taken in just a minute. Play then goes to the first player in the second team. And he picks a number that hasn't been taken. His team gets that number of points and the opposing team gets all of the factors of that number which haven't been taken already. And then you alternate back and forth between the two teams until all the numbers have been taken. And when they have, you decide the winning team by adding up all the numbers that each team has accumulated. Except uh, we're going to look at another way to find out who has won the game by using some properties of inequalities. So we're going to be studying inequalities, but we're also going to be studying factors with this game. And best of all, it's a game that involves some pretty good strategy. So let's try playing. Here's the game board. We have two teams. And this game board has the numbers 1 through 25 on it. Let's suppose that team 1 has been chosen to go first. And the first player on that team decides, well, I want the most number of points. I'm going to take 25. That will give my team a lot of points. However, remember that the other team gets all of the factors of 25. So by team 1 picking 25, team 2 is going to get 5, because 5 is a factor of 25. And they also get 1, because 1 is certainly a factor of 25. But now notice that all three of those numbers have now been removed. Team 2 might say, hmm, I better not take 24, because there are a lot of factors of 24, and I don't want the other team to get them all. So I'll take 23. Now we're back to team 1. and Actually, we're now on to the second player in team 1 because remember, we're going to have different players from each team make this choice each time. And the next player on team 1 says, hmm, I agree with you. I shouldn't take 24. I think I'll take 22. So he takes 22. The other team We'll get 11, though, because 11 is a factor of 22. And for that matter, they get 2 as well, because 2 is also a factor of 22, and it hasn't been taken yet, but 1 has already been taken. So now we're back to Team 2. Team 2 decides to take, hmm, I'm not going to skip, I'm not going to take 21, because the uh, other team will get some points out of that. I'll take 19. So they take 19. Notice that when they take 19, the first team gets nothing because it's a prime number and its only factors are one in itself and both of those numbers have now already been taken. So the next player in team one might follow that rule and say, I think I'll take a prime number. I'll take 17. The other team gets no points. Now when we return to team two, we notice that, well, 16 isn't prime. 15, well 15 wouldn't be a bad choice, would it? Because if I took 15, the other team will only get 3 out of it because the other factors, 1 and 5, have been taken. Notice there's a lot of strategy here. We're back to team 1, and maybe that team takes 13 since 13 is prime, and they know the other team won't get anything out of that. Well, we're going to run out of prime numbers eventually. So at some point, we're going to have to take all of the numbers on this. We're down to team two, and we're up to the next player on team two deciding which he should take. Maybe he decides, hmm, now would be a good time to take 21. So he does. That's not a bad decision because team one will only get seven out of it because the other factors, three and one, have already been taken. We're up to Team 1's turn, and the next player in Team 1 might decide, 
Well, I think I'll take 20. That's a big number. And I'll get 20 points out of it. Not a terrible choice. Except that Team 2 is going to get some points out of this, right? They're going to get 10 because 10 is a factor of 20. They're also going to get 4 because 4 is a factor of 20. We're at Team 2's turn now. And maybe the player for Team 2 decides, well, now would be a good time to take um, 18 because 18 uh, is a high number. As you can see, that would not be a great choice because, yes, his team gets 18 points, but 9 is a factor of 18, and so is 6. So both of those numbers go over to Team 1. It's Team 1's turn. A good move for Team 1 would be to take 14 now, and that's indeed what they do because its factors have already been taken. We're up to Team 2 now. Team 2 might take 8 because all of its factors have been taken. Team 1 would say 12 would be a good choice. Let's take 12. Now you, of course, might make better choices than this. But nonetheless, by them taking 12, the other team gets uh, no points out of it. At this point, Team 2 takes 24. And Team 1 takes a 16, and the game's over. Well, the game's over, but now it's up to us to decide which sum is higher. But I'm going to suggest that we do this not by getting the calculator out and adding, but by using the fact that these are inequalities. Team 1's total and Team 2's total may not be the same, so, so they're probably an inequality. We can always subtract the same number from both sides of an inequality, and the inequality is still preserved. So, for example, I could look on the left-hand side and notice that 9 and 6 add up to 15. So I could scratch out the 15 on one side and the 9 and 6 on the other, and indeed that would, that would be fair. As an, another option, I might notice that 22 and 7 make 29. 19 and 10 make 29, so I've taken away 29 from both sides. And you can see what I'm doing, going to do. I'm going to continue to look for equals on both sides that I can take away. How about 14 and 16? That makes 30. Over here, I can get 30 by saying 22, 25, 30. Here's 12, and here's 11 and 1. I've taken away 12 from both sides. And we'll continue doing this for as long as we need to until we're sure what the winning team has. Over here, I notice that 21 and 4 make 25, so I'll take away 25 uh, from both sides. I think that's probably far enough for us to realize that on the right-hand side on Team 2, all we have to do is add up these three numbers, and of course that's only going to make 50. Over here, we're going to get 53. So Team 1 would be the winner. It's a good game because it involves strategy, it involves factors, and it involves the idea that we have an inequality at the end, and we can take away equal amounts from both sides of an inequality, and the inequality is preserved. Now, I think after we played it once, we'd go on and play the game again, except I would use a different board. I would use this board the second time. And you can bet that the second time around, your class is going to be a little smarter in, in the, their strategy. The first team is very likely to take 29, since it's a prime number, and the second team is very likely to take 23. But sooner or later, of course, they're going to run out of prime numbers. They're going to have to take some composite numbers. And that's when the real strategy uh, starts to un unfold. Well, I hope you've seen this is a fun game for kids. It's easy to set up and one that will keep your kids all actively involved. Hope you have fun with it.